the age of four, my granddad gave me a hammer. From then on, whenever I used to visit, I spent hours with him in his shed at the bottom of the garden. I'd watch as he takes scraps of materials and turn them into toys for me and my cousins. My granddad would teach me about the different properties of materials and how to use the tools and the machinery in his shed. Before I started secondary school, I was designing and making rounder sets, toy trucks and jewelry boxes. At such a young age, I was able to experiment and explore. My granddad had ignited my creative spark, which is something I will never lose. Upon starting secondary school, I was introduced to my first design and technology lessons. However, I quickly became disappointed. Over the first three years, we were being taught basic skills, such as how to safely use the machinery, what the tools were for, and about the different types of materials. These were things I had been doing for years with my granddad in his shed, but I understood that the other students still needed to learn. Do we underestimate just how quickly young people learn? After all, who is it that shows their parents how to record TV, how to text, and how to use computer programs? This country would still be using the abacus if the youth of today had not taken up the challenge to train their parents. Three years to learn the basics, come on. To add to my frustrations, every student in the class would design and make the same product, such as a clock. But our clocks would only differ by the shape and the color of plastic. This was hardly inspiring. However, I was fortunate that my granddad had already given me an insight into just how creative and innovative design and technology could be. I didn't understand, and I still don't understand, why we were being taught basic skills and asked, being asked to produce the same products. This meant that many of my peers, unfortunately, but understandably, lost interest. So how do you get them back? Well, I'm not sure you can. All good businesses understand that customer retention is the key to success. Can educationalists not see that the same applies to them? Take fresh, bright, inquisitive minds and club them with boredom, and there's no doubt that you'll lose them. Thankfully, once I reached GCSE level, I was able to create my own brief. This really excited me, as it was like stepping back into my granddad's shed, having free reign over the materials and the machinery to create something that I was excited about. I wanted to identify a real problem and solve it. Due to arthritis, my other granddad couldn't squeeze toothpaste out of a tube. So I designed, manufactured, and installed a toothpaste dispenser into my granddad's bathroom. Seeing him using my product was the ultimate reward. <laughs> Thank you. My teachers then put me um, and my toothpaste dispenser forward uh, for a technology competition. And I believe technology competitions are extremely valuable to both the school and the student. At 15 years old, I was shy. I was the girl who would hold the poster up in front of their face whilst delivering a presentation. So the thought of a competition was more than daunting. However, as I believed in my product, that day I was able to find a voice that I didn't know I had. And finding that moment, finding that voice was a great moment in my life. How many other young people ever have the opportunity to find their voice? Then, when I was 17, for my A2 final year product design project, I decided to redesign the refrigerator. By the end of my school year, I designed and manufactured a sustainable fridge, which calls for evaporation and heat transfer. The outcome is a dry, cool, hygienic inner cylinder, which is perfect for the, for the storage of food and medicine. But my fridge was too simplistic for use in our homes, but I realized that it was ideal for developing countries. I decided to open source my fridge, and my fridges are now used across southern Africa. By teaching women the skills of how to build my fridges out of scrap materials, I was able to create jobs and allow women to support themselves and their families. This was a school project, and I hope it shows just what can be achieved in the classroom. So how do we encourage more young people to do the same? Well, I realized that by sheer good fortune, I had an incredible role model, my granddad. 
And I had teachers who recognized my talent, pushed me to work on challenging projects, contact external organizations, and put me forward for competitions. My granddad ignited my creativity, and my teachers fanned that flame. But not everyone has a granddad, Pete. How can we enable every young person to be able to find a role model who will excite and inspire them to find at least one subject area that they love? Well, I think we need to look at ourselves. Individuals with passion and determination. We need to share our fire with our young people to ensure that learning in schools is the best it can be for any individual, whatever the subject area. Why aren't we also teaching young people the skills we know they need and then tapping into the one thing we know they have absolutely buckets of, imagination. Why aren't we trusting them? After all, I was four when my granddad handed me a hammer. It's so obvious to me that we're failing so many of our young people and our teachers through our archaic education system. Therefore, it is my big promise to reignite the spark of creativity and fan that flame with a wind of inspiration. Thank you.